Hey guys, welcome to our Comic Con edition of the Film Pundits. It was a long weekend. We are all freaking exhausted. Good? Exhausted. <laughs> You're not okay. good. But we had a fun time. At least yeah. I had a fun time. Did you yeah. guys have fun? We had Absolutely. me and Hector had a fun time. Blasty blast. Was awesome. yeah. Blasty blast. Bunch of stuff to talk about. So yeah. much to talk about. Let's get right into uh, it. The big news out of Hall H. The first footage for uh, Batman vs Superman was screened. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, I believe I'm the only one who saw it. Yeah. Here. Well, you saw. I saw the stills of it. Yeah. Afterwards, yeah. I haven't seen the actual. It was leaked. Footage. Bad people. Some leaked stuff was things. leaked. Mm-hmm. So, give us your opinion on the footage, and right. then we'll talk a little yeah. bit about the announcements and everything today. Uh, <laughs> all those announcements. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the footage was really cool. Yeah. You get to see Batman and Superman on a rooftop in Gotham City. Batman turns on the bat signal. Oh man. Reveals he has bat armor on. Yeah, Dark Knight Returns awesome. Batman armor, which is w- really cool. Was it actually Ben Affleck or was it like CG? Like no, even his it, chin. It was him in the it suit. It was him. It was and butt it, chin? it was it not. Was it wasn't a CG suit either. It was actual like an Ooh. armored suit. Ooh. Yeah. Awesome. No, it was completely practical. And then Henry awesome. Cavill, Superman, Henry Cavill, Henry Cavill, Cavill, came, Cavill, yeah. Cavill came down into the frame. No, he. So basically, the when the lightning strikes, you reveal Superman. And then it's just like a super close up on both of them, and his eyes start to glow red. He starts yeah, to have a heat vision. I saw that and then panel it cut. Too. Yeah, and it cuts so the title. The footage is saying they're gonna fight. Yeah. Oh yeah. Basically. It sets it up yeah. that well, they're about to kick on. the crap out of each other. Cool. Superman's about to blow some stuff up with his eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the eyeballs. It's gonna get down. How was, how was the reaction? How was the reaction in Hall H with all of those seven thousand people? Right. How was it? Well, it was the way they started the panel that was interesting because last year we know that. When Zack Snyder came out, it was the last thing that happened in Hall H Correct. during Warner Brothers. And this was the Warner Brothers panel, and he came out first thing. This was the first thing that happened. Yeah. So Chris Hardwick comes out, he introduces the panel, and he doesn't even, he just goes, okay, let's just get this thing started. Mm-hmm. And this footage starts playing on the screen, and you don't know what it is. There's no music, you just oh, hear like that's rumbling. Cool. That's really cool. And yeah. you start seeing buildings. And you're like, okay, I don't know what this is. Mm-hmm. Cuts to more buildings and smoke and all this crazy stuff. And all of a sudden, Batman shows up. And it's there was like an animated storyboard. Mm-hmm. So it was like very unfinished. It's like not all the way done. Yeah, well, th- those were just storyboard this, that they took and animated. So you saw Batman, you saw Superman, you saw Superman holding a woman who I, I'm going to assume was Lois Lane. Was and, she passed out? Yeah, okay. yeah. And, and then finally it cuts to, I think it was a shot of Batman and Superman like facing off. And then it cuts oh, back to the Hall yeah. H panel. Chris Hardwick, mm-hmm. and he introduces Zack Snyder, and pretty much everyone just went crazy. Um, but once the, sh- the footage itself ended, everyone went pretty crazy for that too. Mm-hmm. And then he brings out Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill on stage, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. everyone just kind of and lost their actually, shit. Actually, Adam was there, so and we I lost some my good shit footage. too. Yeah. We got some pretty good footage, not yeah. of the actual thing, yeah, but of the reaction of the actual panel and, and yeah. Gal Gadot, and they brought out Gal Gadot. Yeah, and, and then they surprised everyone by by bringing out Gal Gadot. And yeah. when they brought her out, they showed the first picture of her as Wonder Woman. Up on the screen? Up on awesome. the screen. Yeah. She looks very badass. Really good press released photo. I yeah. think the reaction has been uh, awesome on that, except that the internet was quick to point out that it looked exactly like Xena Warrior Princess. Right, instantly. Quick to point that I out, which is I saw real the funny. meme with yeah, Xena yeah, yeah. going like... Yeah, it was great. Which was I... Great. Yeah. You know what's weird? I didn't even know that that happened. I heard about that really? this morning, that people oh, kept really? saying she looked like it Xena. Came, it came out instantly. The internet was saying yeah. she looked... You know, one, a couple of It was probably because I was in Hall H all sure, day, so sure. I totally <laughs> missed all that stuff. <laughs> but I, it's like, thinking about it, it's like, you can't blame them. Like, that's the way to go. That's the way to it, go. It, it, I'm sorry. It is well, the way what to else go. is she gonna look like? You can't put her in. You cannot put her in her classic like no. underpants, <laughs> like blue with <laughs> the white stars. Cor- you can't do that. Corset. And like corset that's mm-hmm. like bright red and bright yellow and mm-hmm. golden. And you know you can't do that. Well, it also goes with her mythology a little bit more it as well. She's does. from the island of these goddess-like women. That's right. The mascara. Who are all that's right. Warriors essentially. I feel like as soon as 300 came out. Yeah. A couple years ago in 2007, yeah. that Six. I think that 2006 was it 06? Mm-hmm. Oh, snap, I'm an idiot. That <laughs> I think that as soon as they looked at know. that stylistically, they're like, that's probably the direction a Wonder Woman should go, like to make sense cinematically. You know what I mean? I think I when they looked at that, they're like, that's the way to go. I think they, I think they just looked at, that. at the backlash that sort of is happening right now, and like the way women are being perceived in comic books. Sure, you know, sure. They're like, yeah, that. They looked at. They're like, her costume is kind of racy. You know, there's no reason Absolutely. for her to function in a in a suit like the that. The only excuse they've ever come up with was, oh well, she's it's because she's wearing the uh, flag of the <laughs> a foreign country that she's going to go visit because she goes as like a dignitary uh-huh. from her island, from her yeah. nation. 
uh, even though it's mystical and no man has ever right. stepped foot on it, as soon as a man does, Steve Trevor, mm-hmm. and he's a U.S. Army, U.S. Air Force like pilot, and he's got the American flag patch right there on his shoulder, that they're like, oh, that's why she's wearing that because no. they they look no. at the American flag and they make a costume, Cut and I'm back. like, cool, but her legs are showing, her yeah. arms are so, like, you know, she's got no anyway. So Cut you're right. Back. So they looked at that, yeah. uh, and then back to that you were saying that that Superman was holding a woman. And you're putting money on it that it's Lois Lane. Yeah, because the yeah. way she, they drew her, she would look like she was like a, a civilian, a not, civilian, not like Wonder Woman. Like right, right, right. Business professional yeah. type. I think dark that's. Hair. I think that's the best call because yeah. I was thinking about it and I was like, in classic versions where Batman, a uh, story where Batman and Superman have fought, one of my favorites being Batman Hush. Superman is brainwashed for a time by mm-hmm. Poison Ivy. I'm not mm-hmm. saying Poison Ivy is going to be in the movie. I'm not saying they're doing that, but whenever Superman is like is like angry or brainwashed or like you know full of rage or like he's not seeing clearly the easiest way to either get through to him or to piss him off is through Lois Lane through Lois so Lane. in that Batman mm-hmm. Hush storyline when he was brainwashed by Poison Ivy because she laid a kiss on him and he was doing whatever she wanted Batman knew to send Catwoman to the top of the Daily Planet and threaten to throw Lois Lane out a window and mm-hmm. then to just do it because Superman, even though he was brainwashed, would snap out of it and save her and then become a good guy again. He was, And he'd be like, sorry, Batman. You're right. <laughs> sorry, dudes. I wasn't cool, bro. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thanks for the wake-up call. Thanks for showing me my I had not to, cool I had to wake, save bros. my wife. And then I, you know. And then he could snap out of it. So I think that'll be, uh, I think that they'll do something like that. Okay, Adam, do you have any speculation as to why they're fighting? No, I have no clue. Because no it's clue. a comic book movie. Well, yeah. I mean, like, why, well, why? but that's the thing. Well, it's, <laughs> it's the ultimate good guy it's against being, the world's It's being built detective. upon. It's being being built upon the backstory of Man of Steel. So yeah, everyone's gonna blame Superman that he's responsible for sure. destroying, you know, a lot of downtown well, Metropolis. Well, that movie had yeah. a little too much collateral damage. Absolutely, and that's gonna so play gonna, a big part in this yeah. movie. And I feel like you know, you take Poison Ivy out of the equation, where she can just brainwash a character. Mm-hmm. You bring in Lex Luthor, who's a master manipulator, and they maybe l- maybe Luthor, and this has been said, manipulates Batman mm-hmm. to come out of retirement That's somehow. What we talked about right before. to like you know, or, or or somehow gets information into Bruce Wayne something, where Batman has to uh, join the side of maybe the government, like which normally is the opposite in the Dark Knight Returns See. comic book. It's the opposite. Batman's the one that's the outlaw, and mm-hmm. Superman, working for Ronald mm-hmm. Reagan, goes and takes him out. I, I kind of have uh, yeah, that kind of feeling. Flip. It's going to be, fl- I, I bet you Batman's going to be on the side of law right? in some way, or the side of the people that are like, you down with aliens, you guys ruined the city. Maybe. Um, and Superman's going to be the one that's like, has to defend himself or prove himself or, you know, like he did at the end of the last movie. I grew up in Kansas, Colonel. I'm about as American as it gets, he said with a kind of a crappy British mm-hmm. accent. <laughs> 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 so I think that's what's going to happen. Um, let's talk about it real quick. Those, those, that was like the big thing coming out of Warner Brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys feel like there's anything that, where they drop the ball be- from maybe what they didn't announce? Yes. <laughs> I think the talk whole about it. Thing. Yeah. Preach, brother. <laughs> talk about it right now. <laughs> You're following up with a movie. This is the most excited I've seen him in yeah. days. God. He's so he actually woke pissed up. me off He's so full of life. I was so angry <laughs> because going into it, I thought they were going to show a uh-huh. trailer for the movie. Uh-huh. Yeah. Then they were going to come out on stage, introduce those three, uh-huh. which they did, and then they're going to say, but wait. There's more to this. Mm-hmm. I thought they were going to bring out The Rock and finally freaking nope. announce who he's going to play. Shazam. Nope. Because he's been teasing everyone for yeah. months. Yeah. I think it's Shazam. And he yeah. won't say who the hell he's yeah. playing. And The Rock was at Comic-Con, wasn't he? He was at Comic-Con. Yeah. He was hanging out there. Hercules. Yeah. So he Ugh. goes and he buys out a theater for fans to watch his movie, but he won't announce who the hell he's playing right, yeah. right. in DC. That universe. is very disappointing. And all, another thing that I was disappointed with is that the characters, when they did bring out you know, Batman, they didn't say, they didn't say anything. Thing. Yeah. Yep. Zack Snyder's like, ah, we're not going to give them the mic because we don't want you guys asking a bunch of questions. And then why the hell did you bring them? Exactly. Yeah. Why did you exactly. waste our time? There was a good article uh, online that we were reading about this. And yeah, it was just like teasing people. Yeah. I understand. He probably did it to try to tease people. But at the same time, it's like, then don't, don't, Here's the don't thing. do it. I think Warner Brothers needs to stop making it a surprise thing mm-hmm. because everyone yeah. knows that they're going to be there. We, we we reported like f- days before that they were coming because didn't someone on the internet said that they were coming. Didn't we call it like yeah. beforehand? They you said, oh, like, no, oh, Batman versus Superman. Yeah. yeah. No, of course Just because you don't put it in a press release. Idiots. We know you're coming. How You've stupid. Been we're not for stupid. Yeah, like we're not retarded. We just love Transformers. <laughs> that's all. We d- that Other movie, than that, yeah. we're not dumb, you, know, you guys. I love that movie. Yeah, but no, I think... I think it was a completely like I, lost opportunity. I would have liked to, especially with them trying to cast these actors, Jason Momoa's Aquaman, mm-hmm. the announcement that the Flash and Green Lantern are going to be in the Justice League movie. They yeah. they cast Cyborg, a guy to play Victor Stone, yeah. who might appear. Right. It's like the fa- I thought that they were going through all that trouble so that they could pull a Marvel 
and just mm-hmm. bring out the cast for a photo op. Exactly. Here's mm-hmm. your Justice League. Yeah. First at time least. this has ever happened. And I know, and I know a lot of people and a lot of people are saying like, well, the movie's still two years away, but so what? when Avengers, when they announced the, at the Marvel panel, when they yeah. announced all the actors for the Avengers, mm-hmm. yeah. that was two years before that movie came out Absolutely. in 2010. And all it was was that panel, I believe they were promoting... Oh my God! It was um, Thor and Captain America. It was Thor and Captain America. Yeah, it had the it. cast for Thor, had. the cast for Captain America, and at mm-hmm. the end, Joss Whedon came out and said, "Hey, I was just announced as a director. I'm gonna uh, uh, let's bring out the cast. Yeah, and for a photo op. Yeah, first time assembly. Yeah, so they announced it's, all the actors. That's which it. That they easily could have done that. Yeah. I don't know why they didn't. As cool as DC was to show that, they seriously dropped the ball on everything th- they built up beforehand. It's like I think they were they were counting on the fact that like, look, we're gonna have Ben Affleck and Gal Gadot there. Yeah. That's the Trinity, yeah. the comic book They're- Trinity. Look, guys, at this point we've seen way more than that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm about to go see a movie with a talking raccoon. You gotta up your game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go mm-hmm. full out with it. Yeah, and a lot of people's argument is that they don't need to because no matter what, people are going to be hyped because it's Batman Superman, which I understand that makes and sense. I agree. But go the extra mile. Yeah, but put in the extra... Like the Marvel extra always puts in the extra effort. Every year they, they put in so much effort to bring really cool footage, to bring as many actors as they can, have Q&A sessions so people can ask them questions, mm-hmm. and then they tease what's coming up next. Mm-hmm. They always... But they, make, w- they make the big announcements. Yeah. They make the big plans. They yeah. say, you know, in a couple of years, we're going to have this. This yeah. is the title of the right, movie. Right. Yeah. Here's the concept art for this. Which like, makes people look forward to coming to Comic-Con every... If you keep making it a secret and not tell people that you're going to be there and then surprise people... It loses its novelty. So like, the discussion... Right. The second year, I was already over. I was like, okay. Yeah, exactly. I was not really excited for anything. I was sitting in Hall H, and when 10 o'clock rolled around, I, the only thing I said to myself was, if they're only going to show a clip of this movie and not mm-hmm. announce anything else, it better be the first damn thing that they do, because I don't want to mm-hmm. sit here for two hours <laughs> but waiting then to be disappointed. They counted on people... So they did it first. The yeah. Time. yeah. So I don't know. So I, the discussion has been that this Comic Con, this year's Comic Con, 2014, has been kind of disappointing with these big announcements. It and, was. And people are saying mm-hmm. Hollywood studios are trying to save money or they're trying to get smart. And they're huh. like, look, we don't need to promote as much. We don't need to promote as much. And I hardcore disagree. But Comic Con is like free advertising. It's, yeah. it's not because only we that. Pay to go. It's, it's a time of year, though, where they should be putting stuff in Hall H and they should be showing stuff to the fans at Comic Con. But then, like a few days later, they should be putting that stuff online. Mm-hmm. And it's about building buzz. Which they are starting to do because right. they had other panels there and a lot of that footage is like, it's now available online. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, which but I I'm think s- they need to do. It, it was like such an exclusive thing. Sure. I probably I wouldn't maybe do it the the like the next day. Of course, maybe a week you, later. Yeah, like maybe a week, week later. Or two later. But yeah. the point is, is that when these Hollywood studios take a movie like Scott Pilgrim vs. the World and they take it to Comic Con and they try to sell it, you're preaching to the choir. They're gonna eat that shit up. Yeah, of we, course they're gonna of love it. Gonna of course love we're gonna love it. Stuff. It's Scott Pilgrim. And so I understand when something like that happens and they're like, well, the crowds at Comic Con loved it and it didn't make a bunch of money. Mm-hmm. Comic Con's not really gonna make us money. It's not what it's about. It's about it's about like building hype and building mm-hmm. buzz, especially for obscure stuff. I'm mm-hmm. talking about Marvel brings out Ant Man, mm-hmm. and they they're trying to sell people on something like Ant Man. Right. They did the same thing with Guardians of the Galaxy, so that right. we can start talking about characters like Groot and Rocket Raccoon and Drax and Gamora and stuff mm-hmm. a year, two years mm-hmm. out to start telling our friends about it. And to start great. saying, go read these comics, go look this up. People are going to be curious. Do it your was, homework. It was and awesome. Then by the next go, time exactly. when they announce it, do your homework. Going to blow up. And do on your that homework. note, last year when when Marvel had Guardians of the Galaxy there. They had only been filming for seven days, and, and they, they had, had an a amazing full trailer, sizzle reel, amazing, a full trailer amazing. that was then later released right. earlier this year. It was a full trailer. Ant Man had stuff this year, yeah, and they haven't even started filming they had yet. Stuff last yeah. year, and they didn't even start yeah, filming. Exactly. Yep. So let's. So go, I remember yeah. my first Comic Con going to a panel, and they were already talking about Ant Man. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was back in two thousand six. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so that, I think that to me is the big, most disappointing thing about Batman versus Superman was they've been shooting for about eight. Eight weeks, ten yeah. weeks now. They could have had a trailer. Mm-hmm. They could Easily. have shown them Easily. actually fighting. I would have loved. They could have seen, shown sure. Wonder Woman. I would have loved to seen yeah with Wonder Woman footage. Yeah, that was something that we had talked about. Like maybe they're going to yeah. show that. All they had was the still, and then they mm-hmm. brought out the actress. Which I like pictures. Sure, but it'd been cool to see the video Her and then action. then right after. Then they're like, hey, here's the actual picture. Sure, of the whole sure, sure. Right, I right, would have loved right. to seen. There was just people talking, like Bruce Wayne meeting Clark Kent. Like that's what I want to see. I want to see Ben Affleck be Ben Affleck right, as yeah. Bruce exactly. Wayne. You know what I mean? That's just, what I want to see. Just a little bit of interaction, even in that in that clip that they showed. Right. Sure. Maybe have them fly at each other. A line yeah. or two. Yeah, said, a line or some two. Some dialogue. Or maybe even that line they said. La- I would take that line they said last year, where you know, remember my hand on your throat. Uh, just, seriously, just have Affleck. They say could have that. had just that incredible. clip in the movie of just mm-hmm. that voiceover starting. Right. And then if Clit cuts into that clip of him holding Superman's neck, exactly. and then show them throw a few punches, and then show Wonder Woman, and that could have been it, and that would have been that would yeah. have been perfect. So you're saying, Adam, that 
the the clear winner for Comic Con is Warner Brothers, despite all of this. You feel like I still think so because because they brought that footage. Yeah, because no one's ever seen Batman and Superman right in one one piece of film together. Unless yeah. you read comic books or like cartoons, <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> but in terms of film, like they've you've ne- you're this guy, you never seen them unless before in a movie true, together. Played by live action actors, unless yeah. you've seen the Lego movie, <laughs> <laughs> which is awesome. I know, it's oh, awesome, but no, I know, so stupid. Um, Okay, um, then I'm going to... Uh, okay, Augie, what do you think between... Because I think the two big companies we're talking about are DC and Marvel, mm-hmm. Warner right. Brothers and Disney. Mm-hmm. Between the two, who do you feel like was the sort of winner of Comic-Con? And we'll go into the discussion of what Marvel had. I'm on Adam's side as well. I, think, I disagree with I you guys. I think DC took it just because of the fact of the novelty that we sure. haven't seen Superman and Batman sure. in a live-action movie before. I get it, dude. It's like I said, when, I, when they first released that photo of Superman yeah. standing on that rooftop, yeah. I was like, I'm a Marvel guy, and Marvel needs to move that. They need to move Captain America 3 because... Mm-hmm. This is awesome to see Superman in Gotham City. Okay, I get so it. I get what, the appeal. What was it that Marvel? I'm gonna gotcha tell you why. Because again, I didn't see the. I saw the panel because it's now online. I didn't see the footage that they showed, but I read a description on it. And just reading the description of the footage, it's a scene of people talking. I'm talking about Avengers: Age of Ultron. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's scenes of people standing around talking and, and making mm-hmm. jokes, and then you see little things of the villain, and you. They just. I just feel like they just brought more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, and not you only get that, a, you get a real sense of the tone and the and the relationships and exactly, all that stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And not to mention, they're amazing and beautiful. Characters that they lined up mm-hmm. everybody it's mm-hmm. Avengers we're talking about okay lest we forget the Avengers are going to come back which is forgot. rad and they even did a bunch of stuff with Ant-Man and they even mm-hmm. announced that Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is coming out which and is they cool. brought out Josh Brolin with the Infinity Gauntlet Very which cool. was awesome right? it's like imagine if, stuff. if uh, what's his name uh, uh, Jesse Eisenberg came out as Lex Luthor and had something you know what I mean? Like something like that would have been cool. With Whatever. his bald head? With his bald he just, head. Like, showed his know. bald head? <laughs> I think he's going to have hair in the movie. Yeah. No. That's a whole nother. Don't even oh, get me started geez. on that. He does, I know. but I, I, have, I, I have my reasons. He's going to go why. bald by the end of the movie. Yeah. He's going to. He better not do like that lame, like Gene Hackman, like no. Kevin Spacey, like Hack- I was wearing a wig Man. the whole time. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. It's like, <laughs> he better like shave it because he's like, Ugh, hate Superman. Something <laughs> cool. No, it's going to be something like, like he's going to try to power himself up. Like Breaking Bad, right? Something like. No, what if? What if? No, that was cancer. That I know. Cancer, I'm like, dude. whoa. That what if Lex Luthor breaking. gets diagnosed with cancer in this movie and then pulls a Breaking Bad? <laughs> and then and he has a, to put like a cancer oh. thing in his chest, like Iron Man, and then. Oh. And right. we, are, we are so off topic right so now. So off topic. Let's talk about the Marvel <laughs> Studios panel. Let's talk about it. They uh, they they started with. Ant Man, yeah. which is coming out, the first movie coming out after Avengers next yeah. year, 2015. Which is a little backwards, but okay. <laughs> Robin, I know why they did it. Right, the, of you, you don't start with the big show, yeah. unless you're Warner Brothers. <laughs> uh, but, uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> so they talked about Ant Man. A couple of interesting things to take away from that, and then they went into Avengers Age of Ultron. At what point did they announce, what point did they have Chris Pratt come out and announce Guardians of the Galaxy? That was 2? the very, very end. Of very, the very entire end. thing. Oh, Marvel really? Studios, yeah. Chris Pratt came out at the end after they. Well, had... he didn't come out. They, it was a video that they played from London that James Gunn and Chris Pratt oh, recorded. Oh, very cool. Yeah, so they were talking That's about. Awesome. It, it was actually a really funny video. They they are joking about, they were they were acting like the cameras weren't recording. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, it would be really funny if we just, you know, maybe we could announce that thing, you know, that thing that we're going to do the next, mm. you know, maybe we could announce the next Guardians movie what do you think are the cameras rolling and then then like the thing comes up and it says guardians of the galaxy 2 that's perfect and in line with the whole sense of humor well yeah of the whole movie that's great the sense of humor on that movie is what's going to sell see the one thing i I give marvel credit to is that their panels are always very creative they're very creative and entertaining yeah you know Um, very entertaining like the actors came out dancing to to michael jackson come on you know all of them robert downey jr's throwing roses into the crowd in true robert downey yeah he gives a rose to kobe smulders and to elizabeth olsen and then he saved a rose for thanos purple rose (laughs) for thanos (laughs) and then josh Josh brolin like like bites it and throws it in the crowd where's my rose yeah so uh, they definitely have the entertainment value Right. Right, right robert downey was the guy that at the end after they showed the footage for avengers i think chris hardwick was the moderator was like how do you top that and Robert Downey took the mic, and he's like, you know, the great thing about Marvel is that they've always got the next thing lined up. Yeah. And how do you top it? We've got Thanos. And then that's, you know, it's like that l- yeah. excitement. They're just like fun and funny. And it was almost it. like his Hulk line. We've got exactly. a Hulk. We've got a Hulk, exactly. yeah. Oh, I didn't Thanos. even make that connection. Hey. Mm-hmm. And now I've got a geek boner. Thanks, Augie. <laughs> You're welcome. Full on. Glad I can give you a geek boner. Mm. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> stay, stay. It's about to get good. It's so, getting get better, actually. Let's talk about, first of all, I'm still bummed here too because I feel like Marvel still dropped the ball a little bit. And that's what the internet's saying. Well, I mean, they that's could what have saying about this Comic Con. Right? It has it's not Comic-Con. been spectacular. What could Marvel have announced? They could have announced who the hell is playing Doctor Strange, but maybe they haven't locked down that deal yet. I don't think they know at this point. I think they know. It's interesting because two days before. I think it's signed probably. It's not yeah. signed, but two days before, Benedict Cumberbatch made a joke about Doctor Strange. Somebody asked him, What superhero do you want to play? And he's been rumored to be in the running. I don't and he think made it's a joke. Be him. 
And then, uh, like two days after that, Joaquin Phoenix is the rumored guy. I really but they hope didn't it's lock not down Joaquin that Phoenix. deal. Uh, listen, I would be fine with either just because I trust Marvel at this point. Yeah. Those two are not the worst choices to play Stephen Strange. Yeah, um, I don't yes. have a preference one way or the other. Because I think I'm thinking of like Joaquin Phoenix, like signs. Like I really liked him, and I just saw her, and he was amazing. Totally different character than Doctor Strange. I but seen I'm just her saying, yet. you got it. It's it's really good. Yeah. Uh, give him the benefit of the doubt. But I'm saying they could have announced that. I would have loved if they had announced because they have all these movies. These yeah. movie dates that they haven't announced what yeah. the secret movie is Just yet. before Comic-Con, they announced five additional dates. So they have, I yeah. think, what, seven or eight dates? And they just added another movie yeah. mm-hmm. to Because Spider-Man moved. So they're like, cool, we're going to lock down that May yeah. release date yeah. in 2018. So they have, we don't they, even have an idea yet, but we got to get that date. <laughs> so they have seven or eight movies that they actually have release dates it's for. Like, look, and they announce none of them except for Guardians of the Galaxy. I would have just been happy, if, if, even if they never ended up making it, but they just announced it because they're psyched about it. If they're like Black Panther. Black Panther's going to be a movie, you guys. We're he doing an African superhero. Movie. Needs his own movie. That needs to happen. Needs his own movie. You know, I would have loved that. And then, again, another wild card out of left field if they said something like, The Runaways is going to get a movie. Like, one of those, like how Guardians was a wild card. Mm-hmm. It's like, we, you know, we need something to See, spice it up in between all the sequels. they're going to have that many chances to announce characters like they did with Guardians anymore, though, because Guardians already did it. Hey, man, you know? Marvel's got a bunch of characters. I know And, they and do. a lot of obscure ones that... You might not think have an interesting backstory, but in the hands of the right writer, like they got a bunch of stuff. Right, they got a bunch I'm of stuff. I'm saying sort of like the slot has been filled. I get you. you know? I like get the novelty is sure. the novelty now, now is gone. yeah. Sure. The novelty of having a funny, awesome action packed movie has yeah. already been done by Guardians of the Galaxy. So then what so then that's why Doctor Strange would fill that the exactly. void of like an interesting Maybe they'll go creepy, you know, Maybe creepy they'll go like kind magic of dark. movie. Of course, Something very like Guillermo that. del Toro mm-hmm. style. Mm-hmm. I think and I think next year for Comic Con I think there's gonna be a lot more to look forward to because I think that's when they're going to announce a lot of these titles. Sure, which people I'm are also saying... I wish they would have yeah. done... At least they could have at least announced Captain America 3 is this. Like the title of it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Captain like America Captain 3 America is that. Civil War. Yeah. Or Captain America, you know, like the return of Red Skull. Or that was a terrible touch, name, something. You think they would touch oh, Civil War? I'm absolutely sure they would. You if they, if they had all of their... End. If they had everything lined up to do Civil War, I think they would do something Civil War but related. But they don't have Wolverine. Of course. They don't have Spider-Man. But they got They're integral parts of Civil War. Of course they are, but... There's also a bigger story at play, and the bigger story is between mm. Iron Man and Captain America. That's true. They could also do a story that came out in the past couple of years like uh, Fear Itself because the driving characters be- behind that were Captain America and Thor. They got those. And I think Marvel, the comic book company, has been kind of smart to do this mm-hmm. because I think that they're, you know, they could also do Secret Invasion, mm-hmm. although I don't think that they have the rights to the scrolls. That's technically a 20th Century Fox mm-hmm. because they're Fantastic Four villains. Mm-hmm. But, like, if they wanted to do that... The major players, they have all the major players. Yes, I would miss Spider-Man. Yes, I would miss Wolverine. They had some great moments in those comic book storylines, but they're like not, you know, Civil War is not uh, Spider-Man versus Iron Man. Like, and then they're SOL. Like, oh, we don't have Spider-Man. We got to replace mm-hmm. him with somebody. You know, mm-hmm. th- they've got the main players. I think they need Spider-Man because Spider-Man reveals his true identity. I know, man, but that's also a very Spidey-centric storyline, too. It is. You go back and, you know what I mean? Like, him whole falling out with Tony. This is is a great geeky thing we're going off. (laughs) Not related. No, you're right. Yeah, so, but, you know. It's part of it because it shows that he is aligned with the side that you didn't think he was going to be part of. Sure. I'm trying to think what other similar things that they've done. Well, real quick, certain, what yeah. what other movies do you think they're that they have announced for these other dates? I think that uh, the Inhumans is one. Yeah, the Inhumans. Mm-hmm. Okay, obscure little branch of, mm-hmm. and I think that an, a follow up Hulk movie mm-hmm. is another one that they haven't. Me and Adam were talking about that. The Hulk. Yeah. I really want to see Planet Hulk. Everybody does. I don't yeah. necessarily want to see Planet Hulk. I don't necessarily want to see World War Hulk. Mm-hmm. But there was a rumor a couple weeks ago that the next Hulk movie was going to tie into Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay, which and they're I was not like, doing. What's that? Which they're not doing. They're doing Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Right. So I think that that would be a cool way to go and get him into space and then maybe have a little Planet Hulk thing happening. Let's do it. But again, Planet Hulk was reliant on the Illuminati, which was reliant on Reed Richards Mm -hmm. and Professor Xavier Mm -hmm. and Namor. These characters that they don't have. You know, so that's interesting. So that's a big part of it. Um, I know. But do I want to see another Hulk movie with Mark Ruffalo? Hell yes. My, My call would be Indestructible Hulk. Which is a okay. recent series that came out you written by Mark Wade. You had me read that one. That one was cool. Where he works for Shield. Yeah. Because I'm reading that comic book and I'm like, Marvel Studios has the rights to everything that's happening in yep. this right now. They could pull this off beautifully. It's like, damn Hulk. It's really cool. And I want to yeah. see them do a Hulk movie and then bring in his cousin Jennifer Walters, she Hulk? aka She Hulk. Yeah. And I want to see them bring back Betty Ross, General Ross, Emil Blonsky, The Abomination, the leader played by Tim Blake Nelson in the Incredible Hulk movie. Like, there's a bunch of stuff they could do without necessarily going to space. There's still Earth Hulk stuff to I do. I want to see Hulk in space. I know, I know. We'll eventually get you know, it. We'll you, eventually I think we'll it. eventually eventually we'll see him, but I think they're really 
they really want Hulk to be in, in the Avengers movies. He's like the biggest yeah, selling point of the Avengers movies. I mean, he's sort of he's like definitely in when Mark Ruffalo came out on that set or at Comic Con in 2010. Half, maybe not even like a third of the a third of the crowd. A maybe. bit of a lukewarm reaction. Yeah, Robert Downey definitely had to pimp the guy out because he, he had just been replacing Edward, Edward Norton. Norton. Right. The news had just come out. Yeah, mm-hmm. this year, uh, he got loves the. Him. Everybody Biggest applause out of the entire room. Yeah. More than Robert Downey Jr. He can do no wrong. Yeah, <laughs> he's well, adorable. There you go. He's Hulk. That's he's adorable. He's we Bruce need Banner. To see another Hulk movie. That yeah. doesn't You're seem right. like the support is there yet for the Hulk movie. What do you? What well, do you think the other movie for 2016 is? Because we have Captain America in May, and they have another movie in November. I think. I think it's mm-hmm. November. Mm-hmm. You think it's Thor three? Maybe. What I'm gonna put think? money on Thor three, yeah. yeah. aka Thor Ragnarok. That's what I would call it. But I'm not running the studios. That uh, would be man. That'd be crazy. The end of all worlds. Yeah, dude, throw him into Ragnarok. Oh, okay. I think they could do it. Uh, I think <laughs> that's just because that's a very Thor specific. Yeah. Anyway, that's what that's what. Uh, so there was some disappointment because none of these big announcements were happening about yeah. these future movies, and we're sitting here speculating. Yeah, and like we can't, good geeks. You would think that they would have made all these big announcements, and they didn't commit to it. They didn't do it. Does it hurt them? No. People are still really excited. Sure. People are excited about Batman. They're excited about Superman. They're excited mm-hmm. about Avengers, Ant Man. You know I what's guess. crazy? You know, I'm I'm really excited about Ant Man because yeah. I first of all, number one, I can't wait to see how that thing turns out. I want to. I'm just Paul curious. Rudd. I want to see number Paul two. Rudd I want to see this. Paul Rudd, yeah. dude. Michael Douglas is in this movie, yeah. and he was at Comic Con. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, they brought him out, and he's very that was old. The first time, right. of they course, popped his cherry as they. I know him. there and were so <laughs> many sexual jokes in that panel. It was, it was hilarious, but it was odd. great. <laughs> um, so let's talk about Ant Man for a bit because I think there's a couple cool things to pull from this. Uh, yes, they replaced a director, which I didn't really mention at the panel. I've seen some interviews. Yeah. Yes, they. They had an actor, Patrick Wilson, who's not involved in the movie right. anymore. I believe it's because they cut his character out entirely. I'm not sure. Yeah, they said it was, they cut out the character and then they were scheduling conflicts with him and then one other actor. Mm. Ooh, I hope it's and they didn't conf- uh, Two actors actually yeah. got written out completely. Yeah, yeah. And they didn't confirm if Michael Pena's in it or not. Okay, I'm still yeah. holding out for that guy. I love Mr. Yeah. Michael Pena. I, I just, this movie, the way it's setting up now, I know we've talked about this before, but yeah. I feel like it might be Marvel's first flop. It, Just because of the production problems already. I, I get it. I get it. I still have faith in Marvel, I but mean, I get where you're coming from. Yeah. If there were going to be any movie that we would look at all the pre-production of and be like, mm-hmm. hmm, was this Rocky? Was this like, was this mm-hmm. a little shaky it's before? Little shaky. This is the shakiest one yeah. thus far, for sure. If, but if there was that many problems with the movie, though, I think they would have just... Pushed it back. Yeah, they would have been like, look, yep. we can't make this movie for 2015 mm-hmm. because of production problems. Mm-hmm. We're going to push it to 2016. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's and all they, they didn't would have do to that. do. They didn't do that. That's Batman, true. Superman did that. They didn't do that. Yeah. You know, so that's like because I think you know Edgar Wright's been working on it. He was working on it for so long. Sure. They were already in pre-production for such a long time. A lot of the materials that they need for the movie are already done. Right. It's really just the script that needed to be kind of tweaked, finalized. And Adam McKay was writing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Director of Anchorman. Mm-hmm. So what I'm excited about is that Corey Stoll from House of Cards, who I loved him in House of Cards, um, is going to be playing the villain for sure, who is going to take the identity of Yellow Jacket. Which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. One of Hank Pym's uh, previous, you know, identities, identities mm-hmm. at some in the comic books at least. I don't know if that's going to work out in the movie, but well, in the movie he the said that he guy. was a former mentee of Hank. Yeah, Pym. absolutely. So and he uses the same technology to create the right. object. So I'm excited because I just like that actor. So I'm like, cool. That actor is going to be the villain. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Evangeline Lilly. Oh, I love her. She's the best. <laughs> yeah. She's so great. Yeah. I'm in love with her. She's fantastic. She's finally confirming that she's in the movie. Mm-hmm. And the poor woman was answering dodging questions the pa- the few days before this Even panel. Even the day of. The day of. Like, I don't know. I'm not an Ant-Man. I don't know anything about it. She finally comes out on the panel and it's like, it's announced. She's in the movie. Yeah. And she's playing, and I want to talk about this, a character named Hope Pym. Mm-hmm. Hope Pym. Uh, I think that's her full name. I think. Uh, Hope Van Dyne Pym. Something like that. But she's the daughter of Michael Douglas. Right. Michael Douglas, the original Ant Man. She's the daughter. For a while, it was speculated she was going to be in it, and she's going to play the Wasp, a beloved character. She'd be great as the Wasp. But now, she's the daughter of the Wasp. Mm-hmm. She's the daughter of Ant Man, the original Ant Man, Hank Pym, you know, uh, from like back in the day. Mm-hmm. And she is Paul Rudd's age, character's age. Mm-hmm. And so they're probably going to be an item. And so people are saying, well, she might end up being the new wasp the new or like wasp, inherits yeah. the superpowers from her mother and, and, and well, father. Well, weren't her powers given to her? By Hank, just through like the gloves. Are you talking about the stinger? wasp, or are you yeah. talking about the specific character that she plays? I'm the original the wasp, totally. Hank Pym just yeah. like gave her the formula. Right. So he just, she can f- just invented a formula. Of course, of course, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's that's the whole point of the movie because Scott Lang, Paul Rudd, he doesn't have superpowers. Mm-hmm. He steals this suit from the original Ant Man and then mm-hmm. goes and becomes a new Ant Man. Yeah. You know, he's a heroic thief. So, but the thing that has been kind of come out is that uh, Hank Pym, 
played by Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas said that something tragic happens to his wife, mm-hmm. and then his daughter becomes estranged, and then it's hard for them to reconnect, and mm-hmm. that's going to be part of the movie. And so people are saying, cool, his wife, uh, Evangeline Lee's mother, the original Wasp, Janet Van Dyne, is going to die in this movie. And mm-hmm. some people are like, well, that's kind of a bummer because she's a beloved character. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of okay with it because... She's not going to be the Wasp in any Avengers movie anyway. Correct, right, because she's going to be Michael Douglas's age, like whatever Mm -hmm. actress they cast or in the flashbacks or whatever. So, exactly. Because we're okay with Michael Douglas possibly not being in any. That's fine. I would love it. I would love it if, in some point in the future, Michael Douglas is Hank Pym has a little back and forth between like Robert Downey Jr.'s Tony Stark, because mm-hmm. I've always loved those two characters in the comics, yeah, but yeah. but we can still get that witty banter I fun. think you'll see Hank Pym in an Avengers movie. Ma- yeah, in a cameo Hopefully, role. Right. I mean, in yeah. this movie, in, a- in, in Ant-Man, he's in yeah. Paul Rudd's helmet giving yeah. him directions. Exactly. Like a mentor superhero. Yeah. So he, you know, he might like show up. It's like Terry McGinnis and Bruce Wayne. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Batman mm-hmm. Beyond. There you go. That's, mm, a, good one. that's a good reference. That's a really good um, one. So... So back to the Wasp, like people are upset that Janet Van Dyne is going to be killed at some point in like a flashback or whatever. But like we're saying, Evangeline Lilly could still be a new iteration of the Wasp. Okay. Okay. I'd buy it. Right? And for then a what, the reason I'm excited, $1. this is, I got to talk <laughs> about this for a second, right? Back in 2008, the first Iron Man movie comes out. And in, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Iron Man is the world's first superhero. Mm-hmm. Okay. He publicly comes out in like Iron Man 2 when he fights Whiplash at the. At the racetrack, racetrack, and it was awesome, and it was like televised, and that was like the first superhero moment, right? But we learned in this world, wait, 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 Bruce Banner turned into the Hulk a couple years before, he's mm-hmm. just been a secret. Hiding in Brazil. Uh, exactly, or running around, mm-hmm. a fugitive. Captain America was active in World War II, and he became a legend, but he wasn't necessarily a superhero, per se. Like he, you know what I mean? Like he was yeah. a figure. He was a figure. He was a public figure. Mm-hmm. And now what they're doing is they're fleshing out, and again, the first Iron Man movie, you had Agent Phil Coulson. May he rest in peace. Or not, because he's alive. Who knows? Uh, but he told Robert Downey at the end of that movie, like, just call a shield. The mm-hmm. strategic homeland interforce, whatever, and logistics. I should know that. I should know that. <laughs> the strategic homeland that, I'm disappointed intervention, in you. espionage, logis- I'm turn logistics off your division. Right now. The, the strategic homeland intervention, intervention espionage. No, no, no. I know it. I'm doing it off. right now. I'm doing it. But <laughs> he's the one that was like, just call a shield, as if shield had just been forming. No, no, no. We learned. Shield came from World War II. Yeah. They started to build themselves up to be the Tony 50s Stark's and father. 60s. Yeah. Tony Stark's mm-hmm. father. So now we're going to have additional superhero characters. Ant-Man and the Wasp, active in the 60s or the 70s. You know, they're just they, fleshing they're, out they're their back. They're former back- members of S.H.I.E.L.D., I'm sure. Oh, cool. They're just fleshing out the backstory. All that's right. that's what I'm excited about. Okay. We learned Thor's been active for thousands of years. He's a Norse god of thunder. You know, they're just fleshing out their world. So yeah. we could, at some point in the future, maybe get a, a, a young... Ant Man and Wasp, like retro 60s movie or story yeah. or short. Kind of like, like when you saw flashbacks in Watchmen and you saw all the old for generation. Sure. For I like sure. X Men First Class. Absolutely. That could, uh, exactly. They could mm-hmm. get, they, they could have like a Silver Age version of the Ant Man running around. Awesome. And it would be an actor that looks like a young Michael Douglas. Mm-hmm. Like you could do a bunch of stuff with it. Oh, yeah. The Hobbit is a prequel. It is. I'm just saying. They went back and, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. So so I'm looking forward to that. And like we're saying, we could still have a wasp at a future point played by the lovely Evangeline Lilly. Who would be mad at that? Mm. She's great. Yeah. And the other thing, too, I want to mention is that her character does from come, come from the comic books, Hope mm-hmm. Van Dyne Pym. But she's a pretty obscure character who is from a future alternate Marvel world where all of the superheroes are a little bit older and she's like mm-hmm. the next generation. Mm-hmm. And she kind of turns evil because a new group of Avengers come up and she's like, no, 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 my father died being an Avenger. Hank mm-hmm. Pym died. And you guys are sullying his name. I'm going to shut you down. So she becomes a villain named the Red Queen. I don't think any of that's going to happen in this movie. I think they <laughs> literally just pulled her name. So <laughs> stop speculating about it, you nerds. It's so not stop happen. talking about it. I'm you sorry. I just you're feeding them those geez, thoughts. I know no, you're it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Perpetuating this. It's freaking not going to happen. It's not because they would need Spider-Man for that. It doesn't matter. Yeah, right. Just like you shut down my idea because there's no. I'm sorry. I'm going to cry now. So how how do you guys feel about Guardians of the Galaxy two being announced? Very excited. I mean, this first movie that we are going to go watch fairly soon, right? Wednesday, something like that. Wednesday. Wednesday. And Thursday. And Thursday. Um. It's it's got 100 percent on Rotten Tomatoes right now. Right. Mm-hmm. Very Actually, I think it's a 96 now, but regardless. Oh, did it drop? Really? Yeah. Well, still. But still, the it's point still is, is that we feel like rating. we feel like we're gonna love it. Like yeah. I think I'm gonna dig it. That's the thing. I don't want to go in sure. saying that I'm gonna love it, but this is one of those types of movies that I am going to freaking love. Very, I know very it. much looking forward to it. I know. And it. the thing that makes me excited is that I'm just happy that like the studio has faith in the movie. Yeah. They're like, yeah, we're doing part two. Oh yeah. We don't care. You know, it's, it hasn't come out yet. I like that I don't they think have it's so gonna much flop, faith right? that they can just have fun. It seems like they're just doing anything they can to have fun with this movie. Yeah. It just awesome. seems like an ultimate they've, they've fun. They've earned movie. it. They've had yeah. this is Guardians is gonna be their tenth Marvel movie. Yeah. Wow. 
That's crazy. Awesome. Tenth they, Marvel they movie since two thousand eight. That's great. Very cool. So I think they they've definitely earned their place to just have fun. Not that and much to debate. Still make still make I'm, good I'm movies that are connected to the cinematic universe, but something just fun. I know yeah. you guys don't agree, but I think this is going to be the the best Marvel movie. Oh, I don't disagree. Awesome, I man. think I think it's going to be, awesome. be the absolute I love these best stupid one. I think they're I think so their great. movies have gone so, so good. It's stupid how much I love these it's movies. It's stupid how much I love these movies. It's my favorite movie franchise of all time. Right. Take that James Bond. Take that Harry Potter. <laughs> Boo. Twilight. Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, right. No, that's Star, great. What is that? This is going to this is going to go great for people watching this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, go ahead. <laughs> We're going to get so many thumbs down now. <laughs> Damn it, Hector. <laughs> I'm just saying it's my personal favorite. But that's okay. Um so yeah, we're all in agreement. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, then I one of the things they had on display at the DC booth was Ben Affleck's cape and cowl. I saw that. Which mm-hmm. were pretty, mm-hmm. I thought they were pretty cool. I Very cool. I, I wish they would have just addition. actually had the whole damn suit. Of course, suit. they should have had the, the suit. It's, again, they keep teasing uh, things, teasing things. Do you think they just like painted Batfleck gray? I don't know. What do you mean? Because he's so buff. <laughs> oh, you know what I love it's about just like you know what I, I was like I don't understand. You know what I love about <laughs> like mystique and they just yeah, give him exactly. textures. <laughs> just you know what I love about the the, ba- the bat flag is that he's maybe because he's a little bit of an older dude. I don't know if it's him or, f- or if it's the suit. He's got like but he's got like that. Kind of yeah, he's got like the buff the gut. The buff like gut. A, like yeah. gorilla, love that. Like a silverback gorilla. Like, uh, has, like, <laughs> like you can, uh, still, they like, can still tear you apart. Like uh, like Michael Chiklis or like you know it's like a solid like mass like or like Marv from Sin City like it's just gnarly like but it's like I got a gut but it's buff. It's like a dad gut. Like I drink, but I work it's out at the same gut. time. Like it's a dad, gut. you know. Yeah, yeah, you know exactly. Gotham yeah, dad. Like dad. I'm excited. Like Meanwhile, Henry gut. Cavill's like, I got the little abs, I got the little torso, and he's, he's like, like, no, I got your buff body gut. Fat. <laughs> Come at me, yeah. soups. Yeah, I got the buff. <laughs> Punch me in the gut. <laughs> Maybe that's why they didn't have the rest of the bat suit. Maybe yeah. <laughs> because it's just painted on latex. You know what I noticed about the suit too? Because because they were so high up, and I'm walking around, I'm like, oh my god, there was little holes punched out for the nostrils. Yeah, like it's rubber that goes like. All the way, like it, you know, that's the how bottom all the masks of the are. Yeah, you didn't know that. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, it's got because it's got the little point exactly, uh-huh. and then yeah, it needs to go. They under. had they had all the Batman masks on display, and yeah, if you look, it, they always they don't have they that. don't do it like the comic books or like the Adam West one oh, where like just goes over. where it just goes over the where nose you and you the can, yeah the bottom of the, of the nose is yeah. part of the mouth hole. No, yeah. it's like it covers the nose, and then there's yeah, two little. That's mm-hmm. badass. I've heard rumors. Let's talk about this for a second. It's kind of rumors because Ben Affleck. Looked pretty miserable at Comic Con when he came out. <laughs> I don't know why. Dude looked tired. We were talking about it. You think yeah. it's just because he was w- wiped out? No, I mean the guy's, the guy's playing Batman. Yeah. What, how do you, how are you not dude, excited about ben that? Ben Affleck looks like, looks like that half the time anyway. Yeah. I mean, dude, he's he's no, 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 no. He just looks like Disagree. he doesn't want to be there. He was more excited like on like uh, Jimmy Fallon on the Tonight Show talking yeah. about Batman. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe. Uh, like and they, they said they said they just got there that morning. They were filming the night before and hopped on a plane. There you go. Where are they, where yeah. are they filming? Tired. Where are they filming? Like in Detroit, Michigan. Detroit. That's yeah. right. That's a. Flight. I just rode ten miles the other day and I was spent. Yeah. I mean, let alone fighting Superman all day. I'm just <laughs> saying the rumor that I heard was that, and I didn't know to quite to believe it until I saw Ben Affleck at Comic Con. I was like, oh, that dude looks really pissed. The rumor was that like he's really disliking the suit on set. He's really uncomfortable. He's having a lot I of think problems. That's just he's nerd very, speculation. It again. is, and not, not only nerd speculation. I think it's it's BS Hollywood speculation because yeah, that's exactly. an easy story to write oh, yeah. and publish can online. I, can I be honest with you about that? What's up? They've said that about every freaking actor that plays exactly that's Batman. <laughs> exactly. And every right. single True. time they ask them, he's like, they always say. Yeah, the suit is a pain in the ass to wear, but you know what? I yeah. get to be Batman, I'm bad. so exactly. it's okay. I'm sure Christian Bale had his. <laughs> He's they, you know, yeah, it's like, and it's like, and it's like, you. How, it's like, how is the suit a pain in the ass? You guys have made like eight Batman movies, like nine <laughs> Batman. Like you guys haven't figured it <laughs> out. Yeah. It looks like they figure went back out. to the stiff neck. Yeah, thing yeah. Where he's going. It's like not this. 1989, guys. Like, right, figure exactly. this out. I don't know how that's. See, that's my thing about the suit that we saw. It looks like it has a pretty stiff rubber neck. Ugh. Not like not like Christian Bale's that yeah. had the inner the what's it called? The I mean it's a bummer. Parts. Yeah. Right. Because the Christian Bale suit, he did look like a little skinny with a little skinny neck and you're he like, look, he did look like he had it a doesn't have that, head from It time. doesn't have that sort of, you know time, time. like the superhero meaty right. neck. Like yeah. thick, but you, I don't want to choke an actor. To go along with yeah, with you gotta have a thick neck. But I don't wanna choke the poor guy. He was he's a good director. He made Argo. I don't know. I I think people just blow things way out of context. Yeah, there, here fine. we go speculating. He's going to play yeah. Batman. He's gonna, it's going to be great. He's right. going to do yeah. a good job. I, think I hope he's having a good time. I, think, I hope so. I, hope he's having, I, really, I, I, would, I think we all would be having a good tired. time. I'm going to chalk it up, chalk right. it up to if being he, tired. If, 
he already knows exactly what goes into playing Batman. He's friends with Christian Bale. Christian Bale has talked to him about Batman. And he loves nice. Batman. He loves Batman. But if you go into that, you have to go into it completely understanding. Suit's going to be uncomfortable. Sure. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be able to turn my head. Might not I'm like not going to be able sometimes. to hear a damn thing. I think he's used to discomfort. I mean, he dated Jennifer Lopez. Oh! oh! Is that a dated it? reference? That's Shots super fired. old. Ooh, That's old. where's the beef? Right, guys? <laughs> oh, that's such an old reference. <laughs> Monica Lewinsky. Sorry, I'll stop. What? That's so bad. Oh, my so God. So bad. Uh, do you guys remember the 2000s? Early 2000s? The early. Uh, I remember okay. Daredevil. So let's, oh, okay. No. I, I still like <laughs> that movie. Let's not get into that. I know it's, it's a bad movie. Just don't, don't say anything. Guilty pleasure. Hector. I'm going to turn off your microphone Guilty again. pleasure. <laughs> yeah, and it, uh, like earlier I was like, Star Wars, like Harry Potter, and I'm like, no, Daredevil's a good movie. <laughs> no, Daredevil, I'm an idiot. Listen clearly. <laughs> this is where you check out turn, and you yeah, stop turn listening off the to me. Yeah. What's, uh, <laughs> what's next on the agenda? <laughs> no, otherwise he's going to start talking about Daredevil again. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, oh, I'm back. Uh, okay, good. I'm back. Yeah. So the other big panel that they had at the end of the night to wrap up Hall H on Saturday was Talk about Night it. of DC Entertainment. They had the cast, and well, yeah, it was the cast from Arrow, The Flash, Constantine, and okay. Gotham. Mm-hmm. And they actually screened all four, well, three pilots, and they did showed a see, clip from did Arrow. Did you see all of them? I, I did. I watched all the pilots, and I saw the clip from Arrow. And nice. uh, one of the cool things that's going to be happening on Arrow, other than Arsenal, is they're bringing Rachel Ghoul on the show. Very cool. I heard, I saw that headline that Very they were cool. bringing. Yeah, Rachel. he was actually in the trailer. They don't show his face, but they do. Like the camera sweeps around the body, mm-hmm. and you get to see. Any idea who the actor is? No, not they yet. Did, they haven't they announced, announced it yet. It. No, they're they're keeping that's that. That's actually quiet. really cool. Which so I'm actually really excited to see who that actor is. Are you be. excited more for this or the the? Where they're going to do the crossover with the Arrow and the Flash? Um, yeah, how's that going to work? By the way, the, l- w- the Flash has already been on Arrow in an episode. Right. I think of season two. And right? Arrow and uh, Fla- or, uh, yeah, Arrow was actually in the Flash pilot. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah he's like. Yeah. So they're the gonna they're gonna start bringing other characters that are not Arrow, uh, some of the supporting characters from Arrow into the Flash universe, mm-hmm. and it's going to continue to crisscross. And there's going to be a Good. big. Crossover, uh, crossover in episode eight of each episode. Good. Can I tell you this? I believe that in terms of Marvel and uh, in DC in television and movies, I think Marvel's killing it at movies, but DC's killing it at television. Oh yeah. I think there's no question about Agreed. that. Yeah. I appreciate Agreed. what Marvel's doing, and we can talk about the Marvel panel, the television panel, which you which went to. I, I didn't go to it, but I oh, read on it. Okay. Uh, where they had Agents of Shield season two stuff, and they had mm-hmm. uh, Agent Carter. Mm-hmm. Which I'm really looking forward mm-hmm. to. Oh, really yeah. looking forward yeah, to. And we I have an article on that. Agent oh Carter my gosh! I so appreciate what they're doing, and I love that those two shows are technically in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Right. I still think that's cool because you get Sam Jackson cameos on Shield, which mm-hmm. is great. Mm-hmm. You're never going to get at this point a Henry Cavill Superman cameo on Arrow, which I like. Right, they're not, but they you know, announced that they're not going to cross over the correct, yeah. correct. Really but yeah. so I appreciate that's what Marvel's doing, but like. Even at the Marvel panel, there wasn't anything for the Daredevil show that's coming out on Netflix no. or the Jessica Jones show after that, the Iron Fist show or the Luke Cage show or the mm-hmm. Defenders. Like, mm-hmm. there hasn't really been anything about that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I think the DC. At Which, least honestly, I never even thought of until you sure. just mentioned exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so right? I think that was that's because I think why. Because Marvel movies are so like, ah, yeah. you know. I think yeah. next year you're going to see all that stuff. I would hope so. I, I can't wait. I'm so looking forward to that stuff. Yeah. I mean, they're filming them now in New York City. Maybe mm-hmm. they didn't have footage, whatever. Yeah. But. Um, at least with the DC Warner Brothers like limitations that they might have, they're trying to make an Arrow show. It's on the CW. They got Flash on the mm-hmm. CW. Right. I don't think they're going to cross over with Constantine or Gotham because uh, they're on different actually, networks. Actually, really. Actually, what do you know, buddy? They were, they were, they were, they were people hey. asking questions. They opened up the panel for a yeah. discussion, and somebody asked them if it was possible if we would ever see those universes cross. And they said, we, well, we're not going to completely rule it out. Sure. It's going to be difficult because they are on different networks. They're different networks, yeah. And because Gotham takes place at such a different time period Correct. than Flash and Arrow. Good. So I'm glad that they said that because I'm glad that they're not like... Because there was a great photo released where it was the actor who played Flash, the actor who played Arrow, and the actor who played... Jim Gordon? Uh, no, not Jim Gordon. Bruce Wayne, the kid actor. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they're like, it's a Flash, Batman, and Green Arrow. Yeah. And I thought that was cool, but it was like... I'm glad they're not trying to say that Gotham ha- is happening... Where Bruce Wayne's eight years old, and then Green Arrow is like thirty, same time. thirty-five. Right, right, like, right, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm glad yeah. that that's not happening because they need to be around the same age. Yeah, well, because right. uh, so from watching that Gotham pilot, you can definitely tell that it's dated. It's from it's from the past. It's like oh, in the it, it looks like I'm it's glad. from the '90s, maybe. So so what what happens to Batman happens in the past in the '90s. They're yeah, not saying Gotham right. is happening now, present day. They, oh. I mean, they don't they don't give it any specific timeline, but, but from when you watch it, past. it looks like it's from like the '90s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's real. I'm excited about that. So by the time he becomes Batman, it'll be present. It'll be two thousand. 2015, whatever, whatever, 2014, yeah. whatever year is today. Yeah. That's cool. That's really I'm good. I'm still not sure what to think about that show. It's just the timelines to me are just a little bit too, a little bit too hard to kind of crisscross to make me believe them, especially They're, with Catwoman. Sure. Like, were all these kids really born at the same time? And they just all happened to 
want to be superheroes? Comic books, man. Yeah, it's comic books. That's how comic books work. <laughs> it's a real fake Seriously, thing, right? Seriously, yeah. It's absolutely. Well, yeah. Same think, with the Marvel I, Universe. I think the thing with all these superheroes is it takes one superhero to kind of spark the entire yeah, rise of true. superheroes. In DC true. Comics, it's usually Superman. Yeah. Superman's Mo- usually sometimes it's Batman because people just like Batman better. Of course. Sometimes in some versions, it's literally... Better. It's literally it's, it's fact. <laughs> debatable, it's but Star Wars, ew, no, <laughs> I love Star Wars. Star Wars is great. Han Solo. Uh, but, um, so, uh, so it, it depends. In Marvel, the characters that usually launch it are, uh, launch it are for the Fantastic Four. But again, they have ties to the past, like Captain America right. and all this great, you know, even DC Comics used to have ties to the past with the Justice Society, and then they right. got rid of it. Whatever. It's a whole thing. Don't get me started. Um, and the other thing that they, they, <laughs> did, they didn't realize completely was uh, Green Lantern possibly coming on to one of the on shows. On the Flash or whatever? Yeah. That's really exciting. How was Constantine? How was a Constantine? Constantine pilot? was actually really good. I, you said it was your maybe your favorite. It might have been my favorite one. I, so I think cool. It, was, it felt the most developed. And it was, I think I was most interested in because I don't know that much about John Constantine. Yeah. yeah. yeah I don't know anything either. Less and expectations because you watch something like Gotham and everyone has expectations because exactly. like, everybody knows There's Gotham. There's a lot of City. weight behind those. Yeah. Of course. I, I went yeah. into Constantine just thinking, okay, I hope it's good. And it was good. Cool. Gotham, Gotham I thought was really good also. I think, um, I think the characters were developed pretty well. The only thing I, I think kind of just kind of stuck with me is I don't think you needed to have all the villains show up in the first episode. Yeah. They had they, Edward Nigma, know, they uh, had Poison Ivy. They've got a lot to prove. Yeah. yeah. Got, and I was about to say about Gotham, and I'm totally on board with you, Augie, but we got to watch the pilot. We got to give it a shot. Mm-hmm. And I'm probably going to watch the pilot in the whole first season for Flash. And yeah. I, You know what I mean? Like, we got to try it out. I but, think I'm going to enjoy that show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but the thing about Gotham is there's a fine line when you do a prequel, a fine line between having references to things where you mm-hmm. can have references. And having every single thing be a wink to the audience and be like, this character becomes the Riddler. Right. This character becomes... Bo- yeah, and, like, the, and the scene that Edward Nigma is in, it, it's full of just like, he's he's trying to give them hints in, in riddles. And I yeah, was, and he, he like, didn't need it. Like, he, like, is he there yet? Is he not there yet? Right? Yeah. It's like... um. <sighs> and and, and I, Poison Ivy is not Pamela Isley. She's now Ivy Pepper. Yeah. And her dad gets framed for the murder of the Wayne family. So mm-hmm. they're, Oh, they're, interesting. Yeah, yeah, they're trying to oh, tie in see, all these again, things. Again, fine line, because then you're going to go into Spider-Man 3 territory where you're like, Uncle Ben wasn't killed by just any burglar. It was the Sandman. Yeah. Right. And you're like, it's, ugh. It's, it's it like, just seems like they're going to have it, to contrive too many things to make these exactly. storylines yeah. work. When it works, it works. But... You know, for example, the newest Spider-Man film, you had a character who was the secretary or an assistant to Harry Osborn, just a character. They grabbed the name Felicia in reference to mm-hmm. Felicia Hardy, the black cat. Does mm-hmm. that mean she's going to be the black cat later? Not necessarily. It's just like it's a good little nod, a good little reference. It doesn't take anything away. Mm-hmm. The problem with Gotham, the show, is that all of the characters are comic book characters except for Jada Pinkett Smith's character. Yeah, Fish Mooney. Fish Mooney. Who everyone's like, cool. So she's gonna die in season one, like, because <laughs> yeah. she's not in the comic book. Like, she's not, yeah. you know. But it couldn't turn. It could turn into something where they make her canon. Absolutely. Because they did it with with some that. characters in Smallville. They did it with a character from Smallville. You're right. And yeah. mm-hmm. you know what? It would be cool if they did something where like they killed off Oswald Cobblepot, the Penguin, and they're just like, look, we we don't know Which what we're I have doing. To say he was one of my favorite parts of that show. Great. He was. So really they're not good. going to. Well, Wah. maybe they'll kill off the Riddler. So. Maybe the you know maybe they'll kill off Ivy Pepper, the Poison Ivy character, and then another Poison Ivy. Like it, I'm just saying, don't feel like you have to. St- if you're gonna do this, to to get me to be invested in these characters knowing where we th- we all know where they're going to end up right. mm-hmm. you got to mix it up you got to f- you know feel free to break off from the story right. and it's now, fine and now they're already it's dropping fine. hints that the joker may show up in some form sure but it's but it's Jack not Napier but it's not maybe. it's actually not going to be something like that it's going to be something where apparently he's going to be it's multiple different iterations of the joker but he's not the joker that we know it's mm-hmm. more like copycats mm, so so someone is going to start a trend and so it's, it's almost come. like like he does in the movies where he has sort of his gang that dresses up like clowns yeah. or something yeah, like that. Yeah, something like that. Maybe he'll yeah. rise through the ranks and then he yeah. also yeah. has everybody. He also has uh, different backstories that he tells on purpose to try to confuse yes, people. To to so confuse we might people. see that. Like I heard, yeah, that multiple characters could be teased and we don't know which one will end up being the Joker mm-hmm. is what they could mm-hmm. do right. in Gotham. So and then they'll never we'll see, reveal man. it and then the Joker will just be yeah. up there. But so and Flash Pilot was really good. Um, the visual effects were, were, were really well done. Cool. Uh, I thought the acting was really good. I think the the characters were a little bit underdeveloped. Mm-hmm. Was the only thing that that kind of bugged me about that show. But it is the pilot. It is the pilot. Um, but it was really cool to see John Wesley Shipp, who played the Flash in the original '90s series, in the show. Nice. And he was at the panel. It was that was really cool. That's awesome. Nice little um, back. Arrow looks obviously really good. But we got to get Adam West on uh, the Gotham show. Let's get him on there, man. <sighs> Let's do it. Do we have That'd the mayor awesome cast yet? Do we have the mayor? I'm serious, yeah, man. Just have him awesome play the, to get He him plays him the mayor in Quahog on Family Guy. Let him play the mayor in Gotham. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Citizens of really Gotham, cool. <laughs> It'd be perfect. Do but it. It was a it was a, it was a really good panel. Again. It was a three hour panel. I know, man. So then they were talking about that uh, Adam, the Adam is going to be in the show. Cool. Um, Ray Palmer. Yeah, 
Rachel Ghoul, mm-hmm. and they're talking about a few other characters. It's so awesome. it was good. Batgirl, maybe on Who? Arrow. Batgirl, I heard. Um, maybe? I don't. They didn't really. They didn't talk more Batman characters other than Rachel right. Ghoul, but right. I think it's gonna be good because cool. a lot of cool pilots. They were they were cool. really good. Yeah, so I think they've got good shows coming. That's awesome. Speaking of DC Comics. Moving into that was a terrible segue. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the same thing we're always talking about, let's talk about the next topic. The next Adam, what is topic. It? Uh, the next thing I, I wanted to just talk about it's a documentary film called "The Death of Superman Lives: What Happened." Mm-hmm. It's going to be a ninety-minute documentary that talks about the uh, failed movie Superman Lives, which was supposed to be directed by Tim Burton. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With Nicolas Cage as Superman, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. I don't even. God, I want to see this. Docu- <laughs> I, I want to see this documentary. That receding hairline. It's so interesting in to me. Superman suit was. I mean, this wrong. thing was classically part of a bit of Patton Oswalt's, where he talks about like. That's right. Remember that? I where he's like, he's like, it, we yeah. got to. It's like, do we really want to see a Nicolas Cage Superman? Like, like you know, Lois, I'm in Metropolis. Like that would have been bananas <laughs> if you think about that. <laughs> that <face>. I'm needed. <laughs> I can hear with my super hearing. Luther, stop! I just hear a bunch of. Ugh. Why is he Keanu Reeves? Like, what are we doing right now? This is a terrible impression of Nicolas Cage. In the cage, it's so bad. I'm just doing like Andy Andy Samberg's impression Andy, of Nicolas you're Cage. You're doing Andy Samberg doing uh, doing doing Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. Like, how do you mother for me? Nicolas That's all I'm cage. doing. It's so bad. Uh, so, but uh, regardless, that would have been bananas, right? To have Nicolas Cage uh, Superman. Okay, the combination of Tim Burton and yeah. Nicolas Cage. Yeah. With a I script by by Kevin Smith, which yes. actually he wrote the first he wrote the first version of the script, and then they had another writer come in to change it up. Mm-hmm. But it was a very if people think Man of Steel Superman was really dark, mm-hmm. this was a Absolutely. really dark. Superman. Well, he had a black suit with a metallic S. Sure, but it's different. It's fantasy dark. It would have been a different. It you know what I mean? Been like like whimsical. Exactly. Like w- exactly. <laughs> it would have been like Batman <laughs> Returns, but with Superman. Is yeah. what it would have been Which, like. You know, I don't know if they would have released that. So I mean, interesting. I, no. <laughs> of course, I'm so glad they didn't make it. I feel like this is a classic example of people in Hollywood that don't exactly know what they have, but they have to make a movie. Kevin out Smith of it. has a pretty perfect of rant he on does. the movie. Of course, when he absolutely. talks about it's with beautiful. John Peters, and he it's talks beautiful. about the writing script, and he's like, yeah. "Who the fuck is Kal El?" He's like, mm-hmm. "Kal El, Superman, Krypton's where he's from." He's like, "Oh yeah, planet blows up, cool." Keep going. <laughs> it's just and like, this is a guy that's like a producer Jesus on Christ. the movie. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So Barbara Streisand's hairdresser. It's mm-hmm. such a good example of um, this is sometimes where we get to a point where if Hollywood can't find the people that are enthused about it or that get it, you know, then this is what happens. And it's getting better because now, being in the 2000s, I feel like most of the filmmakers now are comic book geeks. They grew up on it and they get it. Like yeah. Before, it's before they're people our age. Yeah. Joss exactly. Whedon, Zack Snyder. It's not hard. Guys, it's yeah. not hard to get now. I mean, yeah. they were there then in the 90s too. It's just but they were too young. Too not young, established. Difficult yeah. difficult to to know to get them on this mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. Um so I cannot wait to see this. I mean, all the production artwork and all the behind the scenes stuff looked oh, really yeah. cool and I'm interesting. I'm going to watch the crap out of this documentary. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, and it was awesome. So John Schnepp, the guy who directed it, he actually got to go to London to Tim, Tim Burton's house. Yeah. Cool. And Tim Burton actually gave them a lot of access to the archive footage Good. of like screen mm-hmm. tests and and a lot of VFX tests that they did. So I, it's it's mm-hmm. cool. Very cool. cool. It's it's a cool documentary. It's not cool that Nicolas Cage was going to be Superman. <laughs> no. Well, just, and, just, and, just and, and, and Batman was going to cameo in that movie. So you know yeah. for sure it probably would have been... Val Kilmer? Val Kilmer or oh, Michael yeah. Keaton cameo yeah. in that yeah. movie. It was Crazy. pre-Bat nipples. Hey, you know, Brainiac was in... Like, there's, there's oh, pros yeah. and cons about it. I wish that more movies from my childhood... Didn't get made. I'm talking. I'm looking at. I'm looking at you, Super Mario Brothers. I hope you were never made, and I hope it was just a documentary. Like they almost, ma- they almost made a crazy. Yeah, like they, oh, they almost made a crazy Mario Brothers movie. Can you imagine if that had come out? <laughs> uh, no, but it actually did. It actually <laughs> came out. You're like, oh wait, it's it terrible. Because that that would be the perfect subject of a, of like yeah. And at one point, Mario and Luigi go to a dance club and they're dancing with this stampa woman. Like, and you're like, what? That would have been crazy if they made that. Uh-huh. Yeah, Dennis Hopper would have been in it. Oh, it would have been crazy. Like, <laughs> what? This is a real movie that was You're released, like, no, dude. No, this actually happened. This actually happened. It did happen. He had, like, spikes in his hair. Like, <laughs> he wasn't Bowser. He was just, you know. Didn't they do, a, like, a raptor Yoshi? Yeah. A little rap. Yeah, a little yeah, animatronic it was Yoshi, but he That was like actually a kind of a cool part of the movie. I just <laughs> wish he was bigger. But, right. You're totally right. Well, I'm just saying. Yoshi is not a vicious raptor. He's Neat. a little lizard with... I know, with a sticky tongue. I know. With little feet. <laughs> Although, he has shoes on. He does, a little boots. Although you, guys are, yeah. you guys are the most tangent-driven people tonight. What are you talking about? Funny fact about Yoshi. When s- Mario <laughs> wait, rides wait. him, when Mario <laughs> rides him, when you hit the button for him to stick his tongue out, it's you hitting a button to make Mario punch Yoshi yeah, in the back of the head. Him in the back punch of him head. in the back of the head to, to get him to stick his tongue out. That's, That's abuse. Yeah. That's awful. That's animal abuse. That's awful. Copita. He's not like petting or like leaning no. in and being like, Yoshi, can you stick your tongue out, please? He's like <laughs> punching him. And then he sticks his tongue out. How's that accent? 
I said, Yoshi, please. <laughs> yes. do, uh, do me a favor, please. <laughs> Can you grab that piece of fruit on the tree? Please, just stick your tongue out. No, he's just hitting him. And then people don't notice, too, the original Nintendo game, when oh you shot God. a fireball, Mario, like, brings his hand up to his face. And he spits. And people are speculating that he spit, or he goes, like, and does a it's snot thing. Rocket. And it comes out of his nose, like, boop. <laughs> I know a lot so about Mario. Fun facts. We've, we've been, been duped. duped. He's Mario's gross. He's an abusive, gross, <laughs> mucusy guy <laughs> who just steps on life forms and kills them and crushes them. This is what this is no what remorse. happens when you've Not been at Comic Con for, for four for freaking women, days. For a woman. Well, yeah, for one woman. And the guy keeps telling her, like, look, Mario, she's not around. She's, she's not, not here, interested. Bro. And he's like, I'll keep a try. Let's let's go go no means no, Mario. Let's go again. <laughs> I'll kill everybody. <laughs> I gotta get laid. Like, you're awful, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Can we put this <laughs> bit at the front of the video? This is what's going to get people <laughs> get out of my way, Toad. This is what happens. Now you're doing yeah. nacho. Now this, you're doing nacho. nacho this is what happens when you're at Comic Con for four days. We got a little no delirious. Sleep. We got a little delirious. <laughs> you just go crazy. Oh my God. Oh. I'm sorry, guys. I love Mario. So I love what's, it. I, I, what's next on so the list? So uh, during the Crimson bad. Peak panel, Guillermo del Toro came out. Cool. And he asked the audience what they thought if they wanted them to if they wanted to see a Hellboy three. And of course, everybody wants to see everyone course. in the Hall H. But if, if they could have done dancing dances on their chairs, they probably would have but danced yes. and stripped course, down. And I don't know. The crowd what. at Comic Con, of course, wants to yeah. see. Hellboy 3. Do you think they'll actually make that movie though? I don't know, dude. At this he point, he said on Reddit he just had an AMA. Yeah. Ask me anything. He said that it is not happening at this point, yeah. as far as you can tell. Yep. And that was it. And I feel like it's been at that way for years. Yeah. And Ron Perlman, he, he says every time he sees Guillermo, he tries to get him to do Hellboy yeah, 3. Even though exactly. Ron Perlman's like 60 at this point, like right. dude's up there. I think right. the only thing that's stopping them is, is finances. That's such a bummer. I don't know if it's just finances. But since now he's working with Legendary Pictures, they're very open to, to giving people chances on things. I hope, and man. even though Pacific Rim didn't exactly do what. They had hoped it would do. They still greenlit a Overseas. sequel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They still greenlit a sequel. Animated series. Animated series and comic book and series. And comic book. He's making Crimson Peak for them. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling that, that they're, they're, they'll be willing to take a risk on Hell, Hellboy Here's, 3. I saw a documentary on Guillermo del Toro. Oh, not Guillermo. Ooh. On uh, the guy who did the posters, uh, Drew, oh, Drew, Drew Struzan. 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 Lots of great documentary. Watch it. Yeah, so good. watch that one. It's a good one. Um, but Guillermo has, ton- has like three or four... Hellboy posters yeah. that he did they were not released that were not the released studio because didn't the release studio it. didn't do it but he and paid so for them gorgeous. himself they're so gorgeous yeah because he just wanted Drew cheap. to do it yeah and so out of pocket uh, he just did it out of pocket so, so you're saying that's Hellboy a good 3, way to describe how the studio might feel about it like I'm saying that yeah. if, if it does happen Guillermo's probably gonna <clears throat> finance a lot have of to it. finance a lot of it himself yeah. here's what I would say I would say since he's now teaming with Legendary have Guillermo del Toro direct a film for Legendary that Legendary wants to release and put Guillermo's Crimson name Peak. on it. Crimson Peak. Yeah. It, but mean, isn't this a Guillermo project though, isn't right. it? Right. Right. So what do you what do you mean but exactly? But I'm saying have uh, the same way that like like uh you know Michael Bay went and often did Pain and Gain but then he had to go and do Transformers. Mm-hmm. Like the big movie finances oh, a little thing. Saying, so right. I'm saying okay. have Guillermo do some, some movie a mo- mo- money generator. Have him do something that's like a no-brainer. Have him do a Kickstarter. Yeah. I mean Hey, it worked for the dude from Scrubs. Yeah, but that was a much smaller budget than Hellboy. Correct. And this is right. Hellboy we're talking. I want some. I want some. You need a, yeah, I mean, in, like order, in order. In people. order for you to make a Hellboy three, mm-hmm. it's probably gonna. How much did Hellboy two cost to make? I don't know. I man. have no idea. You're probably gonna need, need at least a hundred million or hundred million dollars to make it's Hellboy. Up in there, right? Yeah. Well, yeah in order for the movie to to be considered a financial success, if you include marketing, marketing yeah, it's mm-hmm. got to make at least double. Yeah, that money. How D- much? D- how much successful. money does Reading Rainbow have already? <laughs> I don't even know millions. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. You know they what? Just get, just get like a cool. But maybe the thing like is, twenty million. The thing is, though, Reading Rainbow mm-hmm. <laughs> and Hellboy are so di- are. I mean, obviously, they're completely different. Well, because of what Adam, they are. they're basically the same thing. It's but much you think the same about thing. it. But if you think about it, you're not. You're not. If you kickstart Hellboy, you're not going to make. The money for it. I know. Yeah. I know. It's All impossible. I'm, saying, I'm just being I'm optimistic, you guys. You guys, I all right? I'm being know, a realist. Right? Know, it's not going to make the money, okay? Use, well, it's like a wrestler. Like <laughs> It doesn't matter what your name is, Jabroni. <laughs> That's another dated reference. But I'm saying, and it's like going you're off old. of what you're saying, I'm so old. I'm, I think I'm older than I think I am. Uh, <laughs> you guys remember 1974? It was a good year. Uh, I'm saying, going off of what you're doing, 
have a Kickstarter be a uh-huh. big Hollywood studio movie that Guillermo goes and directs for right. Legendary or whatever and have it make a shit ton of money. And then he's like, okay, guys, can I make Hellboy but now, here's please? The thing. Can I do it? Look at, how many, look at how many movies Guillermo del Toro has either directed or produced or written. Yeah. You would think that someone would just finally say, like, okay, we'll give you money Dude, for Hellboy. Yeah. He has... He like does the resume. strain. He does. He's yeah. doing Dark Justice. He's doing Pacific yeah. Rim, Crimson Peak. He has I mean, the resume to do whatever he wants. Which, by the way, I found out that uh, he said that Dark Justice, his Justice League. Yeah, they asked him about it. Uh, is not going to cross over with other DC Comics properties. And when I heard that, I was like, "Then what the hell's the point, dude? Mm-hmm. At this point, don't even do it." Yeah. I was like, "Don't even do it." If you're going to expand the entire universe, expand it completely. And have Constantine, Swamp Thing, Dead Man, Zatanna. And they're not going to be able to eventually hook up with the Justice League with Ben Affleck and Gal Gadot. And mm-hmm. I'm like, then don't even do it. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have like, don't even do it. We're going to have a Constantine TV. We're going to have a movie Constantine. And then we're going to have like, and they're not going to be able to cross over. That's mm-hmm. the whole point. Mm-hmm. You know, I love Guillermo, but I'm like, that's the whole point. Yep. Yeah. If, that, if that's the limitation they're giving him, where I'd, they're like, look, I'd you take can make. Guillermo project anyway. Right? Though. I mean. I so guess. Hellboy 3. Do we want to see Hellboy 3? We want to see it. Will it be made? I don't know. I want to see Hellboy 3 more than anything else Guillermo's working on right now. No That's way. how badly I want to see it. I yeah. want to see Pacific Rim too. No, I want to see. I'd rather oh. see Hellboy three, but because Hellboy three is the ending, and yeah. it would finish out. The so trilogy. if you have the choice, if, if if right now they were to they were to if they oh, were to take a three. poll, if Hellboy they were to take a poll and say, I love Hellboy. I'm sorry, Pacific Rim two or Hellboy three. You I would didn't say love. 3? I didn't love boring Raleigh from Pacific Rim. I loved Idris Elba. I love some of the other characters. I love the kaijus and stuff. I but love, I love Hellboy. robot fights. So you would, I love so Lamp. You would definitely pick Hellboy three, and you would definitely Absolutely. pick Pacific Rim two. I love demon fights. Can we all I, just I get would, along? I would pick I would he pick Hellboy three robots. just because, like you say, I like to see the whole thing completed. That's it. I don't want I don't That's want an it. unfinished story. Pacific I Rim, I liked it. I liked it for it was, but I don't. The first I didn't one kind of ended the story. Like the first one kind of ended the story. But he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's more. There's more. Of course, there's more to do in that world. Of course. If, but yeah, I want to see. If somebody's putting a gun to my head and they're like, you have to choose which one of these is being made. I'd be yeah. like, Hellboy three. You would selfishly. be shot in the face because you chose Hellboy three. I would. I would die. Because that's the wrong that I decision. I made the right decision. It's the wrong decision. <laughs> I would feel the bullet going in, and I'd be like, "I'm so cool with my decision." <laughs> <laughs> and then I would, I would die. So one of the one of the last bits is uh, they screened uh, Assault on Arkham, which you watched. Did you not, Hector? I did. It's a new directed <laughs> video. Hey, I'm back. I did. It's a directed video. <laughs> called Good morning. <laughs> morning. It's called Batman: Assault on Arkham. It's uh, Warner Brothers' next directed video movie, and I believe it's going to be uh, out tomorrow, like digital HD. You can download okay. it, and then like a week or two later. DVD Blu-ray copy and it's set in the world of the Arkham Asylum video games mm-hmm. right Arkham Which Asylum Arkham City they're so the great way. they're so great now they're a little bit more mature so this thing's rated PG-13 mm-hmm. there was a bunch of violence uh, mm-hmm. there was uh, some sexuality and sensuality and I liked it um, you had uh, adult characters consenting to get down with each other like you know like and it was I was like okay. oh that's actually pretty that's cool that's mm-hmm. progressive and it's mm-hmm. you know um, where like a woman initiated it, and I'm like, okay, good, like that's good. Anyway, um, you had a fantastic voice <laughs> cast. The man, the legend, Kevin Conroy is voicing Batman as he does mm-hmm. in all the video games. Mm-hmm. And the beautiful mm-hmm. thing is, is that I'm not usually a fan of of not Batman centric Batman stories, because this this movie and the story is centered around the Suicide Squad or Task Force Force. X, Task Force X, and, and a really cool collection of, of these characters that have been on this famous team from DC Comics, but like throughout the year. So they kind of picked and choose which ones would be the best kind of combination. You've got King Shark, you've got Killer Frost, you've got Deadshot, you've got Harley Quinn, um, you've got Captain Boomerang, like really cool characters, really cool characters. Uh-huh. You might not think that like, right, I'm listing all they're super obscure, but like you watch this movie and you root for them and it's like a heist movie. It's like an Ocean's Eleven. It's like these kind of bad guys you kind of root for. I didn't think I was going to be on board with it and I was totally on board. And Batman's still a presence. Don't get me wrong, he's still a presence throughout. Unlike them trying to do a Sinister Six movie with mm-hmm. no Spider-Man, I'm like, you guys are shooting yourselves in the foot. That's mm-hmm. the dumbest thing I've ever heard. They did a Sinister Six movie where they were the focus, but Spidey was in it. I'm like, I might be on board with that. Mm-hmm. So, super cool. Troy Baker plays uh, Joker, who he's kind of inheriting the role from um, Mark, uh, Hamill. Mark Hamill, who I believe voiced him in the first game, maybe mm-hmm. the second. I, I, I'm not he entirely stopped sure. after the second. He yeah. stopped after yeah. the second. So, Troy, I think, has also done it in the game, I think. I'm not sure, but solid, solid job. All the voice actors for the Suicide Squad are great. Mm-hmm. Amanda Waller's in it. There's some great jokes, a couple little uh, DC Comics Easter eggs. One that I want to tell you right now, but it's kind of a fun little thing. We can mm-hmm. tell you later. Yeah. Um, but uh, and the animation was really cool, and I have not liked one of these DC animated movies since this much since The Dark Knight Returns. 
parts one and two came out a couple years ago. I mm-hmm. felt like they've been kind of lacking, and I've been bummed because I'm like, I want to like these more than I do. Mm-hmm. The next one that's coming out after this one is going to be an Aquaman centric one, which yeah. I'm kind of looking forward to because I like Drawn Aquaman. To Atlantis, right? Yeah, <laughs> unlike everyone else on Earth, I like Aquaman. I think he's cool. So, well, once again, you're wrong. But Star Wars, but no, no, I'm just saying <laughs> my favorite film franchise, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, I can't top it. Um, so yeah, I would times. definitely, definitely, definitely highly recommend Batman: Assault on Arkham. Um, check it out. Even if you haven't played the games, which I've only played like some of the first one, even though I know they're all great, like the second and the the first and the second you one. You need to play all. Oh, of them. absolutely. I'm gonna go. Uh, listen, I'm making my way through some PS3 games right now. Don't get me wrong. All right, I'm not that much of a gamer. I'm doing I'm doing the Uncharted series right now. I heard those are great. Oh, that's good. A, yeah. Yeah, those are great. Well, I'll do I'll do Batman. I'll do Arkham. I'll you do them all. Need to jump into Batman. I'll do first. it. So you need you to got cancel it. Uncharted. Okay, I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. When I leave right now, I'm gonna go do that. Good. I have the first good. game. I'll this go. Is the back. First time you'd be right tonight. <laughs> wow! I'm just kidding. And, uh, we're friends. On, on that, ah! We're friends. We mess around. On that note, uh, so overall, what, what was your guys' Comic Con experience like? Good, bad, was, disappointing, <laughs> exciting. It was good because me and Hector great. spent it drunk ninety percent. It was of the great. Time. I maybe drank a little bit too much. <laughs> uh, for sure, I drank too much. No, but it was great. But honestly, the experience itself was. It was a little bit last second for me. I, I, I wish I could have planned more. I'm talking about the hotel. I'm talking about, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The travel, all that you stuff. You need to that, be ready All that for stuff that you don't that. think about, mm-hmm. you think you think about, and then you get down and you're like, oh, this is a pain in the head. Like, right, right. getting around, like. It, it does get very tiresome. All of that stuff, I feel like uh, 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 we'll be able to do it better next year. But then also, just the reveals themselves, it was a bit of a disappointment. Mm-hmm. You still love being down there. You still love the vibe. I still love all this news that's coming out. But. I'm more excited about going to see Guardians of the Galaxy. Exactly. What this was your week? experience? Being stuck in Hall H the entire time. It was tiring. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was fun. Yeah. Trip, Thank it was you, fun. Adam. It was I great. think uh, I think Hall H there was some letdowns, there was some exciting stuff. I think the footage they showed was cool. Sure. I would have liked to have seen more more right. news revealed. Mm-hmm. Right. Um I, th- I honestly, I want to say that the night at DC Entertainment, I think that panel was my favorite panel. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Because it showed all the pilots, they had all the actors there. Stephen Amell was the perfect MC for that yeah. event. You got to uh, see his abs, so you're pretty yeah, excited yeah. about that. Yeah, sure. His dad Jeff abs. Johns was there, too. That was pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah. I'm not excited about his abs like you are, but... Mm-hmm. But no, Jeff it was John's abs. Well, Jeff John's abs are like he's regular got, he's abs. abs. <laughs> Jeff John's no, has regular abs. Stephen Amell has like abs abs. Jeff John's has abs? Comic book, DC comic book writer Jeff John's has abs. You don't know. You know I got you. I got you in a lie. I don't know. You lie. It was a lies. All right. So so next year we'll we'll just make sure we uh we yeah. do it bigger. We'll we just be more phone. ready. We gotta next link up year. more, man. We gotta you yeah. know yeah. yeah hotel rooms. Yeah. Don't worry. Have to turn on out. your phone. Yeah. Well, I need service first. <laughs> exactly. We gotta get all that figured out. <laughs> oh, and another cool thing is uh, yeah. I got I got invited to be on the Shmozno podcast on Thursday. It's awesome. So we're so happy for our boy. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. I don't know what's gonna happen. I know we're gonna talk about 3D movies. We're gonna talk about Comic Con. Gonna bring listeners. You're gonna bring listeners. They're gonna watch this. They're gonna be like, these guys are jackasses. (laughs) (laughs) These guys don't know shit. Hey, if you're watching this. Uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, you're right. <laughs> uh, so uh, where can where can the uh, good people of the interwebs find you guys they on the internet? Find me at Zombie Guts 15 on Instagram and Twitter, and uh, also on the Film Pundits. Really? Yeah. Who would have thought it? I know. On the website? <laughs> on the website, I write com? articles for them. For us, those it's guys. Us. No, for those guys. For those I don't know guys. who they are. <laughs> I heard entity. they're magical. You're a good writer, man. We're having a blast. Check out the website. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's great it's stuff. Great. Where, all you what need. about you, Hector? You can find me on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash Hectorminator. Friend request me. I'll friend you. I don't care. <laughs> find me on Twitter <laughs> at Hector is funny. Which Even is though a, he isn't. Which is a sarcastic, it's a joke. Because he's not, not funny. <laughs> exactly. I don't know if you don't know it was either going to be that or Hector is tall or Hector is handsome. <laughs> <laughs> but I think those are taken. <laughs> you can do either of those. <laughs> those are true. No, you can just make three funny. Twitter accounts that has yeah. all those. Yeah, right? <laughs> what about you, Adam? Uh, and I'm under Adam Havoc on all social media. And uh, be sure you guys subscribe to our channel, favorite our videos, like our videos, share them with your friends, go to our website, read all the news articles, and find out any news about anything we didn't cover mm-hmm. because this episode is already way too damn long. Because ask Comic Con is so overwhelming. And Absolutely. yeah, if you guys want to ask questions, ask you questions. can email us at thefilmpundits we'll at gmail.com. We're we'll trying to get you guys answers. We're, we're kind of experts on some of this stuff, comic books and different Sometimes. things. So we want to give you guys answers. If you go see Guardians of the Galaxy and you're like, what the hell was this, dude? Mm-hmm. Ask us. And also, if you disagree with any single thing we've said at any point, please. As I'm sure you know how the internet works, just call us names and disagree with us. Go ahead. Do it. And next week we're going to do a review of Guardians of the Galaxy, and the following week we'll do one for Turtles. So we've got a lot uh, of videos coming out. Don't you, don't you, ugh. Uh, Calm down. Relax. It'll be okay. All right. It'll be okay. Uh, it can't be as bad as Transformers. Dude. Uh, oh, God. They, there's no way. I'm sorry. There's uh, no way. There's, it's impossible. So, uh, and then we're also going to do a, a, a review of 
uh, yesterday's episode of The Strain. Great. And I'm going to go to sleep now because I'm awesome. tired. Awesome. So until Thank next you. time, guys, we'll see you later. Good night. Bye.